Good morning. Welcome to worship today on this fifth Sunday of our season of Pentecost. We are so happy that you are with us today, including uh, any visitors among us here and those of you listening to our radio broadcast today on KRJB FM. This is the day that the Lord has made. May we rejoice and be glad in it. Thanks to Jesse Broughton today for accompanying us this morning and to Jacob Nelson for leading us in song today. We really appreciate uh, the efforts that you both bring to us and thanks for sharing your musical talent with us today. Our altar flowers are in memory of Lily and Peter Rolchinski's wedding anniversary and we thank uh, that fund for beautifying our altar area this morning. A couple other announcements before we begin our worship today. We're working with Faith United Church to collect empty uh, prescription pill bottles to send to third world countries so that they can have something in which to put their medications so they don't have to carry them uh, either by hand or in uh, leaves and, and things like that. So if you have empty prescription pill bottles, there's a box out here in the narthex and you can drop them off at your convenience. A reminder, a scheduled reminder, that this coming Friday, July 3rd, the church office will be closed for the 4th of July holiday, so keep that in mind. This coming Wednesday, our senior high youth will be engaged in a service scavenger hunt in Fargo. We're going to leave the church here at 11 o'clock in the morning and return about 6 that evening. Uh, do we still need drivers, Jacob, or are we good? Maybe we need some drivers. So if you can... If you can drive, if you're willing to drive, talk to Jacob today or call the church office. And then our Wednesday worship service for July will be on July 8th, and we'll begin with some outside games at 5.30 and supper beginning at 6 p.m. with worship at 7. And this service will also include a blessing uh, sending off of our 6th graders to Camp Emmaus, and also those attending the National Youth Gathering in Detroit. So you are all invited and welcome to our Wednesday evening service that night. Pathway Days, Day Camp rather is, sign up is ongoing. Camp will be here at the church from or July 13th through the 16th from 4.30 to 9 p.m. So if uh, your child has not yet signed up, uh, you still have time to do that. And then thanks to all of you who showed up to support us driving in the bus races last night at the county fair. Congrats to our own James Lamont who drove to victory. And uh, I regret to inform you that your pastor did not win because he was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. It really was a lot of fun. And thanks to, uh, thanks to the fair board and, and everybody in attendance. It was, it was really fun. Those are most of the announcements today. Please take a look at the other ones on the screen or in your bulletin sheet this morning. And with that, I invite you to stand as we begin our worship celebration. We begin our worship today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captives to sin and we cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Bible reminds us that God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. 
By grace we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen us with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please take a moment before our opening hymn to extend that peace of God to each other today. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us join together now in praying the prayer of the day. And together we pray. Almighty and merciful God, we implore you to hear the prayers of your people. Be with our strong defense against all harm and danger, that we may live and grow in faith and hope. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
Our first reading today is taken from Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 22 to 33. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put one's mouth to the dust, there may yet be hope, to give one's cheek to the smiter and be filled with insults. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love for he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 30. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cry out to you, and you restored me to God. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing praise to the Lord, all you faithful. Give thanks in holy remembrance. God's wrath is short. God's favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping spends the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt severe, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord, I pleaded with my Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy on me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing, O Lord, O Lord, my God. I will give you thanks forever. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 7 to 15. And Paul writes, Now as you excel in everything in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this manner, matter, I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you, who began last year, not only to do something, but even to desire to do something, now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. gospel today is taken from Mark's gospel, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Mark writes, when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus 
came and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So Jesus went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now, there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately, her hemorrhage stopped. And she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, Your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, He saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put all of them outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was about 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. And you may be seated. Grace and peace once again today to you all from our Lord and Savior, Jesus, our crucified and and risen Christ. Amen. I have to agree that today's gospel is a good one. I think it's a, well, they're all good, but (laughs) but a good one in that uh, it's for all of us who think at least at times we don't have it all together. But I believe that's all of us although maybe not too many of us are, readily, are going to readily admit that we don't have it all together, to admit our vulnerability. Because it's a scary thing to do, to admit that we're vulnerable, that we have times when, when uh, we don't have things together, that, that things bother us uh, greatly from time to time. Some of us can't admit it because, again, it's frightening to do so, to, to again, admit our vulnerability. It's scary to recognize that we are vulnerable from time to time. I mean, what if somebody else sees our vulnerability and then tries to take advantage of us? So there's, there's some merit in our fear. In pre-marriage preparation, the couples and I talk about uh, fighting fair in a, in a relationship because, first of all, we're going to fight, <laughs> at times anyway. Second, because when we get to know each other, we know where the other, in this case, our future spouse, is most vulnerable. And it's unfair to take advantage of that in every argument that comes up. But it's easy for us to do because, again, we want to go to that soft underbelly when we feel like we're losing. And so we attack one another where we're most vulnerable. Or maybe the world to us would be too unbearable if we admitted that we were not on top of it. Also, some of us might not admit our vulnerability because we're convinced, you know, that others need us so badly and we have to have it all together all the time so we don't let them down. 
So in our need to be needed, which is a good definition of codependency, we're convinced that they wouldn't make it without us. We probably haven't checked out that assumption to verify if it's really true, but we're pretty sure that it is, so we're convinced we need to keep it together. And maybe we know that we don't have it all together, but we can't admit it because, wow, what would people think? We probably haven't checked that out either to see if it's actually true, but with such an emphasis on being successful, whatever the definition, we keep up the appearance of being on top of everything. And it's a little scary then to admit our vulnerabilities. Okay, that said, to the text. Jairus is the first one we meet today in our gospel lesson. He's a leader of the church, leader of the, the local synagogue. Leaders are trained to be competent and supposed to have it all together in order to get things done and to, and to keep everything together no matter what happens. Most good leaders are, are pretty good at that. Most, most are. We have some good leaders, and they do a good job of doing that. That is, until something, something tragic happens to someone they love dearly. In this case, like your 12-year-old daughter gets very sick and is on the verge of death. And we might be able to imagine how that would be for us. Maybe some of you have. Maybe some of you have already been there watching just simply having to watch as life slowly slips away from a loved one and there's nothing much else that can be done about it. Jairus can't do anything for his daughter. Even as a respected leader in his community, he, he can do nothing for her. There's nothing to be done. So instead of trying to show that he's got it all together, he admits his vulnerability, and he throws himself at the feet of Jesus and begs him, not asks him politely, like some of us Scandinavians might do. You know, Jesus, my daughter's a little sick, you know, so if you, yeah, if you get some time, maybe you want to just stop over and, and see. Uh, you, but you, take your time. It's okay. Just if you get a chance, maybe stop over. Instead, he begs. He throws himself, Mark writes, at the feet of Jesus. He's desperate. As you might imagine, he's desperate. The love that he has for his child has made him vulnerable. And Jesus is his only hope. And he knows this. So he again, he throws himself at, at Jesus' feet begs Jesus to come to his house and heal his daughter. The woman in the gospel text certainly is not a leader. In fact, she doesn't have any social status whatsoever in the community. She would have most likely been labeled as unclean and, and then as such for, forbidden to be around people. She obviously can't have children, so that further ostracizes her from her social circles. But in her desperation, in her vulnerability, she believes to just touch the robe of Jesus will heal her. And so with a lot of courage, she, she goes to the town where all the people are following Jesus. She makes, his, makes her way up to where he is and touches his, his cloak. There's nothing else to do for her. She's been to doctors she spent whatever little money she might have had to find some sort of cure, and nothing has helped. And now she's broke. She's desperate. She's at the end of her rope. Jesus is her only hope. And then there's also the little girl, uh, Jairus' 12-year-old daughter, who can't do anything because of her sickness. She can only lie wherever she is at at home and be completely vulnerable to whatever it is that's taking control of her body. Jesus is her only hope. And Jesus touches each of them, each person, in their own unique and ultimately uh, vulnerable situation. So maybe the question is today, as I read someplace during this past week, which, which one of those three, or the disciples, do you identify most with? And 
you don't have to answer, okay? It's okay. Well, I'm not looking for an answer. But do we, do we identify with Jairus, the woman or the little girl, the leader who finds all the usual advantages that go with his status in the community, that go with his office, that suddenly don't do him any good? Or the woman, the woman who has endured so much for so long that she doesn't know if she can go on any longer. Or the little girl who is helpless and completely dependent upon others. Which one do you most identify with? As you think about that, as we started this, we we tend to avoid vulnerability again. We avoid having to admit that we need help. We, we avoid having to admit that at times we're desperate, that we have nowhere else to turn. Because it can leave us exposed. Again, it can leave, leave us desperate, just like the people that, that Jesus touches here in Mark's gospel. But oftentimes, it's only in admitting our vulnerability that we can get the help that we need, that we need so desperately. Only by owning up to our frailty and desperation can we try something else, something out of the ordinary and get the guts to act differently, even to the point of throwing ourselves at the feet of God and Jesus Christ and saying, God, help me. Admitting we don't have it all together, then in that situation isn't all that bad. As we throw ourselves at the feet of Jesus, we're healed. It's certainly not the end of the world, just the end of the world that we've created for ourselves to live in or been forced to live in. Because in admitting that we don't have it all together, once that facade of a world starts to fall away, we're invited by Jesus to walk with him and walk with him into a new world of mutual love, mutual concern, regard, acceptance, one of interdependence where we can and oftentimes have to depend not only on God but depend on one another. And that's probably scarier for us when we have to admit that we're dependent upon someone that's close to us. Once we let our our guard down a bit, once we... Once we take off the makeup and tear down the false fronts we live behind, we can go to work. We can go to work then being a community of believers where nobody has to have it all together because none of us has it all together all the time. We can be a community that accepts limitations. We can be a community that accepts vulnerability and move forward to being a safe place in the caring community where we can come as we are instead of pretending and trying to pretend to be a person we think that others want us to be. It's hard to keep up that, that front all the time. It might sound terribly obvious, but at the risk of accentuating that obvious, God knows us. God knows us, and God loves us, and God accepts us for who we are. But as long as we think that we're fooling people, as long as we think that, that we're fooling people, we can never really trust that they accept us for who we really are. And likewise, if we think we have to be somebody else in God's eyes, we can never really accept that God loves us just the way we are. And that happens, doesn't it? It happens as we, as we come to God or as we try to hide from God better and believe that, well, God can't possibly care for me because I just don't have it together. I just don't have it. But God loves us and accepts us just as we are. In our strengths, in our weaknesses, in our joys and in our fears and in our grief. In the song, Jesus Loves Me, which most of us have learned since we were little kids, Part of the verse goes, I am weak, but he is strong. That's admitting. That's admitting 
that we don't have it all together, that, it, that admits our vulnerability. But in the midst of our vulnerability, Jesus is strong and takes us into his arms. Jesus indwells us, as Dr. Andy Root would say, indwells us, walks with us as he comforts us and eases our pain and then rejoices when we do. Admitting our need, admitting our vulnerability, our desperation, again, it's scary stuff. It, it, it's scary. It's unnerving at times. And we can't do it on our own. But that's part of the nature, you see, of being part of or parts of the body of Christ and a community of faith. Because together, together and as God in Christ is with us, we can help. We can help create space where we're able to admit and come together that we don't have everything together. We can, we can come together and, and, and make our togetherness a place where we share our dreams and our hopes and our, and our disappointments and our joys, a place where we can together speak and we can hear God's amazing grace and acceptance and mercy, and love. Glory be to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
I invite you now to stand as you're able as we confess together our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we confess, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and was crucified and died and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand. Spirit's power. We now pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. Gracious God, great is your faithfulness. May we always be reminded of your faithfulness, that it might strengthen us in our faith to come to you in our need, in our vulnerabilities, in our fears, in our anxiety in our afflictions, knowing that as we come to you, you will grant us pardon and relief. Hear us, O God. We pray for the church of Christ that as we are strengthened in faith, we'll be sent forth in peace. Hear us, O God. We pray, Lord, for your spirit, for your spirit flowing through the natural world that we may delight in your creation's goodness, that we may protect what is threatened, that we may regard each of our human, each of your human creation, our brothers and sisters in Christ, with dignity and respect. Hear us, O God. We pray, Lord, for those who cry out to you, cry out from the effects of oppression who cry out from disease or other distress or poverty or powerlessness. Especially, especially we name before you Karen M. Johnson and Darlene Rund and John Peterson and Jack Tracy and Sid Ersted and Eileen Sorensen and all others, those who are on our hearts and minds or those whom it would be easy to forget and those who have been forgotten. Grant them mercy, Lord. Raise them up in the arms of Christ in your great faithfulness. Hear us, O God. We pray, Lord, for ministries of healing in this congregation, for those who visit, for those who care for others, our parish nurses and the like, and those who are friends to people and let them know that God is with them through their relationships. We pray, Lord, that your Spirit's power flow through each of us. Hear us, O oh God. We thank you for all of the many blessings that you provided for us. We pray, Lord, that as we might struggle with so many things in life, that we might know that you are with us again always to the end of the age as you have promised. Lord, hear us, O oh God. We thank you for your mercy shown to your saints throughout the ages, that all may be well in your eternal keeping. Hear us, O oh God. And now, Heavenly Father, receive these prayers and those prayers known only to us and to you. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated as we continue now with our offering.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord's face shine upon us with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.